Good morning. Thank you, Bruce. Stephanie, thank you. Nan, thank you. A couple of my colleagues are out here today. Brian Brennan and uh, uh, Jim Friedman uh, are also on the commission. And uh, I think Oscar Pena, who's our general manager, and Brian Pendleton is our operations manager. So one slight correction, I'm not a founder, I'm one of the collaborators uh, uh, with an effort that we're really going to explain to you today and explain the value of, at least to our port district. We'll give you a brief overview. I think Bruce did a good job capturing some of the key points there. To sort of give you an appreciation of our problem statement and why we worked down this path, uh, explain a little bit what we're trying to do, and then the engagement that we're trying to allow for in the next year or so to make sure people understand what we're trying to accomplish here. As Bruce mentioned, we're, depending on the year, the 10th largest fishing port in the country. We are wedded to commercial fishing. That is integral, that's in our DNA. We have to have that. In addition to which, we operate through the city and are in receipt of about a million dollars of their, your tax money, which funds our harbor patrol and our safety functions. Uh, it's about a $10 million budget, and we have approximately 300 acres of land, which is under our control. That 300 acres of land generates about $250 million to the economy. We are also home to about $150 million worth of development, both for the Portside Partners, which is a new 300 dwellings that will be for apartments and rent, as well as a new effort that we're undertaking with the H. Parker uh, Hospitality to put a new hotel and some additional hotel features that we can allow for better use of our, of our harbor. So here's our Achilles heel. Uh, for us to get out of the harbor into the Santa Barbara Channel, we have to transit a federal channel. This was established by Congress in the early 60s, and it is the responsibility of the Army Corps of Engineers to keep clean. We've got about 500,000 cubic yards of sand that takes off from Point Conception, comes down, and uh, drops into our sand trap. It's an annual event that we have that we dredge that trap. That costs about $6 million. So, my earlier slide suggested we're about a $10 million organization, and we have $6 million worth of work to do. If we don't get this right, we're out of business. And that happened last year. We were shut for about three weeks. The impact to our harbor was significant. The impact to our fishermen, even more so. So how do we keep that clean? We dredge. There's only one boat on the West Coast that can do this because of our particular conditions. If you're in Santa Barbara, you have your own boat. If you're in Channel Islands, you've got a sand trap three times our capacity. We need this boat once a year. And we've worked diligently, and we continue to work diligently to get federal funding. And as you can imagine, Washington's a little different today than it was a year ago. The uh, process by which we secure that funding has been changed by the Office of Management and Budget. And their number one priority is big DOD facilities, San Diego. We don't have aircraft carriers in our harbor. Uh, they also are very keen on having the Coast Guard being allowing access. We don't have Coast Guard. Channel Islands and Santa Barbara does, but we don't. What we have is fishing. And the only thing that raises us up over the other harbors and competing for these monies is our fishing. And I have to give a, a tip of the hat to uh, uh, Congresswoman Julia Brownlee, who has been very diligent in her efforts to support this. We've received uh, notice earlier this month uh, that we have another six million coming next year. So we're good for next year. But how do we keep this happening when our fishing is uh, seasonal and varies? Yeah, if you compare 2013 and 2015 data here, you'll see there's a big dip. And if you're a businessman, you understand a 60% hit brings with it consequences. If we continue our current method of fishing, we will no longer be in a standing to enjoy $6 million worth of funding. So what do you do? Well, you figure, well, how do we think of a different way of fishing? 98% of the stuff you eat in a shellfish variety comes from outside our state. We have technologies that are robust, that have been demonstrated for decades, applied in New Zealand, applied in Canada, applied elsewhere, and they ship those shellfish to us. And those shellfish arrive and we consume them with vigor because we've never found the bottom to that market. Well, how do we think about bringing shellfish to Ventura? We have a collaborative effort here with government and private and educational institutions that was formed up through the guidance and leadership of the Port District together with uh, probably the da Vinci of shellfish. It's a guy named Doug Bush. He's at the Cultured Abalone. He's up the, up the road a bit in Goleta. And if you want to figure out how to grow something, you talk to Doug. We're very fortunate in our uh, harbor to have the Coastal Marine Biolabs, two world-class scientists who uh, have embarked in a, a, a different career 
but understand science and have relationships as a result. And we're partnering also with the Ventura Port District and our company, ALG. We are good at getting permits. We then combined with probably the leaders in education and in research on aquaculture through the uh, Scripps and the uh, folks at the Bren School up the road and Woods Hole on the East Coast. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to do five discrete things. First, bring sustainable shellfish into our harbor. The reasons for that are obvious. If we don't, we lose out on six million bucks a year. But more importantly, what we're trying to do is establish a template. If you talk to people who understand how we're gonna feed people come 2050, it's gonna be through aquaculture. There's no other way to do it. And so we're really trying to develop a template here that makes sense, such that 10 years from now, when we get out of the harbor, you look around and say, hey, these guys got it right. We're trying to make sure that we join and bring in the small producers. That's an element to our harbor that we are home to, and we want to make sure we continue to protect the small commercial fishermen. And finally, we want to educate others. Why are we doing this? And that's really a public outreach. So there's very simple features to what we're trying to do. 20 100-acre parcels located in the state waters. All of those uh, will be uh, landed here in Ventura Harbor, and the port district will hold the leases. That's something we know how to do. We have 100 tenants. We've done it now for over 50 years. We're pretty good at leasing things. So how do we figure out where to go? Well, we went to the Bren School. Bren School has a complicated computer program which causes their computers to fail on a regular basis because it pushes so much megadata. <laughs> they uh, take some delight in that, and they tell their moms and say, Mom, we did it again. So we worked with them, and we understood, hey, what are the features we need to grow something, and where are we going to find those features? It turns out we're in the sweet spot. If you look at the colors here and you look around Ventura, for those of you, that blue color means that's the best place to grow shellfish. So we're in a good spot. Working together with the uh, Bren School and others, we've established an area of interest. We only need about 10% of this area to make our, our project go. But we've established a large area to we really understand the conflicts that may arise. For example, if you're a trawler, and you're currently out there trawling, you're going to say, hey, wait a minute, where am I going to get my fish? If you've got other interests in fishing, you want to make sure that we appreciate those, we understand those, and we design around them. This project, though, needs scale. Imagine you're in Ireland 100 years ago and you've got a small plot and you can't make money. A key feature to agriculture is that you have to have a sufficient size. And we want to make sure that people who are enjoying these permits are, enjoy the economic benefits as well. So we've got a broad public outreach effort. I really compliment the Port District. They've done a great job here. We've engaged with, uh, on our own nickel with some other experts in the area, both on the federal side and the state side. And we really want to talk to people about what we're trying to do, because it's different. There is only 25 acres leased from aquaculture currently today that is bearing those, uh, to bringing those to the market. So we're changing how things are doing, and we've got to make sure people appreciate the basis for that. Um, we have uh, the benefit of having monies from NOAA, from their Sea Grant program, and we're establishing addition additional efforts to secure additional monies for that. But the key idea here is that we want to make sure people appreciate the whole objective here is to support sustainable commercial fishing in our harbor. That brings with us, we think, a whole lot of benefits. You don't have to feed it. You don't have to give it water. What can you say about protein? It also has 5% body fat. And if you talk to people at NIH, the National Institute of Health, they call it brain food. This scientist that I spoke to only gives his kids muscles before he takes an SAT. We also want to make sure that Ventura is thought of as a, a vibrant commercial harbor. Again, we need that dredging money every year. We want to make sure that we have a scaled project that allows for people to enjoy an economic system that's going to re reward them for their efforts. We want to make sure we're respecting the small producer and giving them the opportunities. We've got to make sure we have early and regular engagement with the agencies. They don't know how to do this yet. In fact, we're working very hard with our legal counsel to come up with a lease that would work. They've not leased something like this before. And if you go to the federal waters, there's no provision for subleasing. That's why we're in the state waters. You cannot sublease today in the, in the federal waters of the United States. But the key thing is an economic benefit here to the harbor and to the community. I mean, we're a $250 million engine here. And if we do it right, uh, 10 or 15 years from now, people can come and say, hey, I want to go to the place where they bring those mussels from. Those are the best going to be. They, we think there's been a survey already done with a, a mussel grown up in Santa Barbara and it's favored three to one over the existing muscles. So it's a five-year program. If you're a nautical guy like me, those are waypoints. That takes one year to go to a waypoint. We're about a year and a half in. We're looking about landing product hopefully in three and a half years. 
And with that, I say thank you. We're looking forward to any questions you may have at the end of the program. Thanks, Bruce.